welcome to Big Church. Yeah, it's great to have a whole church family all together in one place. Everyone from all three services. Um, for the first time since 2019. Well, I'm, my name's Jeff and I'm the site pastor here at South Hub. And I'm Bethany, and I'm one of the side pastors at our Evening City Centre service. So we're just so excited for this afternoon service and to worship with you all. Yeah, so this afternoon we're going to be starting with some worship, uh, and then we're going to hear some great stories of what God has been up to in and through us as a church community. Then Andrew and Rosie will be sharing an encouraging message, uh, and we'll have a chance to respond to God together in prayer. And as we gather together today, we recognise that people are in slightly different places in terms of how comfortable they are being close to each other. So we just ask, please consider the colour of the sticker that somebody's wearing. Um, people can be wearing different coloured stickers for lots of different reasons. There's no assumptions or judgments. We just want to love each other and look after each other well. And although face coverings aren't mandatory, we would ask that you consider wearing one while I say. Yeah, well, we're going to start with a time of worship. We're really excited to have the kids in for this first time of worship. Um, and worship is just our way of saying thank you to God for who he is and all he's done for us. Um, and so we, I'd love to encourage you all to worship God um, in song, with your hearts, with your minds, but also with your bodies. Um, the kids team will be down the front uh, doing some actions and dances. And so all of you, no matter what age you are, feel free to join in. And um, yeah, we encourage you to engage in, in whatever level feels comfortable, but um, let's worship God with all of who we are. If you can and you'd like to, can I encourage you to stand? We're just going to pray before we sing. Yeah, Father God, we thank you that you are a good God. Thank you that because of all that Jesus has done for us, we can be welcomed into your presence. So we ask you now, Holy Spirit, would you come and would you move amongst us? Would you reveal Jesus to us? Would you fill our hearts with gratitude as we worship him now for who he is and all he has done? Come here to pray. 
storm lifting up your name Even in the dark, in the depths of pain We will tell our lives to proclaim your fame Jesus is alive, we're forever changed We will never stop lifting up your name Even in the dark, in the depths of pain We will live our lives to proclaim your fame Jesus is alive, we're forever changed We will never stop lifting up your name Throwing aside all our earthly pain We will tell the world that your kingdom reigns Jesus is alive We have come here to praise your name
We worship your name. God is who you are. We welcome you in this place. We welcome you in this place. about sharing some awesome ways that God is moving in our church community uh, at Birmingham Vineyard. Um, we are all about, uh, what are we all about? Following Jesus? Living out of the world. And making a difference. And, uh, so, so as a community, uh, it's great to hear uh, from just exactly what's going on and just how people are pursuing that mission. And so we've got a few videos uh, just to show you this, more, uh, this afternoon. So we'll see I leave all these service people, sorry. So, um, so let's uh, meet uh, Poi, uh, who's been following Jesus and helping make Sundays more accessible. So, Poi, we are so excited that you and your family have come to join us at our church. Could you tell us a little bit about your story? Sure. Um, by God's grace, my family and I moved to the UK for four months mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. And um, we came from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So let me briefly explain a little bit what's yeah. happening in Hong Kong in the past yeah, yeah. few years. Um, in 1997, mm. um, the British government returned the ruling authority back to China, yeah. and Hong Kong is gradually moving backwards with the democracy and liberty. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in in 2014, the Umbrella Movement was a massive political movement that um, we tried to protect our values and democracy from the Communist Party. Yeah. Um, in 19, um, 2019, 18 to 19, yeah. um, it was a climate um, of tension between the government and mm -hmm. the citizens. Mm -hmm. um, because the government, they are trying to implement the national security law on top of uh, above a laws. Mm -hmm. um, and which means that we cannot criticize the government in any way. Mm. Yeah. So, um, and the police became the weapons um, for the government against citizens. Um, and the educational syllabus was also changing in primary and secondary school. So um, these are the reasons um, why we had to leave our beautiful city. Mm. Sounds really traumatic. Yes, it yeah. is. And so, so in all of that, what, what has God been stirring in you? Yeah, I um, served in the youth for seven years. And um, 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 the more I 
worked with the youth and the more hunger I had to equip myself mm -hmm. um, to, disi to disciple them. Mm -hmm. So um, therefore I went to a seminary, um, theological seminary um, for um, three years ago mm -hmm. um, as a full-time student um, to equip myself. Mm -hmm. And after I graduate in May this year, um, we've decided to move to UK. Yeah. And as far as we know, there are many Hong Kongers moving to the UK to start a new life mm -hmm. as well. So um, after I've talked with a few leaders and our pastor, Andrew and Rosie, mm -hmm. um, we all felt that um, we all felt a calling from God um, to build up a Hong Kong community yeah. in Birmingham Vineyard for those who know Jesus and those who don't. That is super exciting. So we're building this wonderful community yeah. of Hong Kongers. So how are you going about making that happen? Um, uh, I'm doing a Cantonese translation during the morning service um, through Zoom. Mm. Um, it's because not every Hong Konger, they are good in um, English speaking and listening. So, um, any Hong Konger who is interested in attending our church and wants to hear Cantonese, they're welcome to ask us to our channel. And please grab a flyer and also have some of this with me today. Mm -hmm. And um, please pass it to anyone who you know you who needs it. Yeah, absolutely. And also, other than the translation, um, I'm trying to get the Hong Konger together, um, trying to create a um, sense of family and community yes. and um, we'll develop a small group in the near future. That's wonderful. So we're really looking forward to welcoming more Hong Kongers to our church. And how yes. can we be praying for you and the community? Yes, um, first of all, um, Pray for them to adapt a new life in UK as yeah. soon as possible. Yeah. Um, they're looking for jobs, schools, and they need to build up their language. Yeah. And second, um, pray for them to um, can see God and um, experience God's mercy and His provision and also get their spiritual healing. Yeah. Yeah. From mm. all this trauma yes. that's been going on in their lives. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, they need that. And the third will be um, God bring um, his people come to our church so that they can get their spiritual home. Yes, mm -hmm. that would be wonderful. We would love to have um, a whole load of Hong Kongers having this as their spiritual home. That would be wonderful. Yeah. And I was just wondering, just as we finish, is mm -hmm. there anything that you would like to say directly to our Hong Kong community? Sure. Wow,我哋一齊經歷咗好多喺香港唔容易。我哋嚟到呢度，我哋都尋找，我哋要重新適應，一個新嘅生活，我哋放棄咗好多嘅，我哋熟悉嘅環境，我哋放棄咗我
the translation of what she said. Um, okay, so that that is wonderful. We're really so excited about Poi. And um, now we are going to hear from Charles and Emma, who are helping Woo! others to live life to the full by creating um, a new community through Small Group. So, Charles and Emma, thanks for coming in and chatting with me today. You've both been faithfully following the Lord for a number of years, and you recently taken part in Leadership Lab, which is um, a course that we run here at Birmingham Vineyard. So, just tell us a bit about what God's been doing in you and stirring up in your hearts. Yeah, since I was a young Christian, I've had the gift of prophecy. And since the Leadership Lab and during the pandemic, I've stirred up the gift of prophecy by participating in two online courses, one in the US and one here in the UK. Secondly, I've developed a hunger for the word and I have recently participated in an online Bible course where I did 12 classes. Yep. And I feel God encouraging me to accept new challenges, knowing I'm not alone, but with Him. So for example, I was so indecisive about doing a leadership lab, but once I did, I really enjoyed it. And uh, at work, I've taken on a new challenge and at times felt, oh my goodness, it's, it's too big for me, but God's really given me grace and steered me through. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's so good to hear how God's challenging you and, and helping you to grow. And one of the um, new things that you've taken on, which is very exciting, is you're now leading a small group as part of our central community. So tell us about um, how you came to be leading that, how you knew it was the right thing to do and the right time to do it. You and John asked us if we could consider uh, starting a small group. So we prayed, sought the Lord and asked him, do you want us to lead a home group? And uh, we had an excitement in my, I had an excitement in my spirit that this is of God and He wanted us to do it. Yeah, and I, I had a peace even though I didn't know how I was going to cope because uh, there are lots of new things happening at the same time. Um, but I knew Charles was up for it and I had no good reason to say no. Um, but once I said yes, I really felt the knew the Lord make a way through. So for example, the day of the uh, home group was changed and it made life much easier for me to fit it in with work. And uh, also Danny and Rafa agreed to co-lead and they are such a blessing. Yeah, they are indeed. Oh, that's so good to hear. And so um, what's going well in a small group? What do you enjoy about leading a small group? Um, it puts us into a dependency on God. Uh, before leading a small group, I seek after uh, God to ask him, what do you want us to be doing in a small group? And sometimes I sense uh, for us to minister to one another, uh, other weeks I sense to expound the word. So that's, it's about dependency on God and following it through. Yeah, I, I enjoy supporting Charles and just the fellowship. It's really sweet fellowship. There's some wonderful people and I, I'm learning a lot myself. Oh, good. Yeah. And so what can we be praying for, for, for you both and also for the small group? Um, three things. One, that we can listen to God better. Two, we can trust God better. And three, we will obey God better. Yep. Amen. I think that's a, a prayer we can all join in with. So thank you, Charles and Emma, for taking the time to talk to us. And thank you as well for your faithful obedience in this, in this season. So, uh, and lastly, we're going to hear some stories from our compassion ministries that are helping to make a difference uh, in our city. So, over to Jess, Simon, and Juliet. Hey everybody, on behalf of our Compassion Ministries team, I just want to say a huge thank you for everything that you have done this year. As a church and as individuals, God commissions us to serve the poor and the oppressed and the foreigner. And because of your generosity of time and your energy and your, your kind donations this year, we've been able to do just that. We have some great stories from some of our Compassion areas, um, kind of our core ministry areas as a church. God's been really busy. Our food bank has already served um, over 800 food bags to agency workers, NHS, health visitors, lots of different people um, to really help people in a time of need across the city. Um, our Grow Baby program has, has 
been serving like crazy in our storeroom. We've already had 166 individual families that we've given free items, free clothing and equipment for their, for their little ones. A lot of refugees or just moms that are alone and have been super isolated during lockdown. And these donations have meant so much to them. We were able to relaunch our stay and play group in September. It's just been going for about six, seven weeks now. We've got 20 families that have been coming along. A lot of moms from the local Highgate area and they're inviting their friends and the sense of community that is growing there has been amazing to see. It's such God's heart. And we're really excited about our food bank champions. That's kind of a role that's launched um, this year. We, we noticed a gap between um, people that were in need of food and having access issues to getting to their local food bank. So we've got some people through our, our church got 20 volunteers that have said, hey, I've got a car, I've got space, I've got time. And they're able to um, to bring over a food bag to somebody in need when we get a, an urgent call from an agency worker. So that's been great. I just want you to meet Simon and Juliet as they share a little bit more about how they've been involved in Compassion Ministries. Uh, thanks, Jess. Um, it's great to see you, everybody. Um, so we're Simon and Juliet, and we got involved with Birmingham Vineyards um, during lockdown. And uh, we felt the Lord calling us to uh, be involved in the, uh, the practical needs of uh, people in Birmingham. Um, there's lots of needs in Birmingham, especially with lockdown and, and COVID, and et cetera. Um, Jesus is at work in Birmingham Vineyard Church, and we like to be part of what's going on here. So we're involved in um, a lot of the compassion ministries, such as Grow Baby, Play and Stay, um, distributing resources from Storeroom, uh, Food Bank and Safe Families as well. And also we do support the work of Restore and uh, Refugee Action. So Jess asked us to sort of talk just briefly about something that we just find really encouraging. Um, so for me, all of those things I find encouraging, but particularly Grow Baby on a Friday um, morning um, is just such a wonderful environment just to show the love of Jesus um, to families um, in a, a safe environment um, to, to build up friendships and just to show unconditional love and care, sometimes beyond the Friday morning um, and linking into the um, storeroom as well um, is really great just to be able to offer practical um, support and to be paying for them, which is just so fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, safe families, um, not just about befriending, but there's a lot of practical tasks that can be done. Um, for instance, uh, decorating, decorating someone's room, <clears throat> helping with a bit of gardening, uh, transporting children from A to B, or um, taking stuff from someone's house into a skip. Uh, lots of different things like that that, uh, that are one-off. So I would encourage people to be involved in uh, safe families if you can. So I think together we just are really um, passionate about compassion at Birmingham Vineyard mm. um, and we do feel called here and to be part of that, that amazing wider team. Um, and we want to be able to bring hope and life and Jesus into a hurting Birmingham and that's what we really want to be part of. Amen. Thank you. That is amazing. Some of the Julia, they're just just joined the church and just got straight in there, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, love those two. You know, I just love hearing these God stories. Isn't it amazing what, what people are doing? And you know, for every story that we see up here, there's going to be like 10, 20 stories that are happening that you guys are doing just from living out the love of Jesus in your lives. And you know, when we share stories, it's, um, it's a real opportunity to just really glorify God and glorify the things that he's doing. So if you have got stories that are happening in your life, we really would love to hear from you. So if you contact the office um, and let us know, we'd love to collect and share these stories. It's just such a great way of encouraging each other and bringing glory to God. It is indeed. So um, it's that time for more uh, afternoon. Why do you keep saying more? Because you're morning day of my being awake at night. So, yeah, sorry. so uh, we're going to turn and say hi. Um, if you, if to someone that's near you, please. Um, um, and we are also going to say goodbye to the kids. Um, so we're going to go into the sports hall to have some great activities with our amazing kids team. <laughs> so, um, sign them in, the children and the young people go that way, that's great. If you've already signed them in, you don't have to go with them, you can kind of just push them through the door yeah. uh, and help them, help them. Send them away. Um, if, you have, if you can actually stay with your children if you would like to do that. There's no need to. There is no, there is no need to. They're going to be fantastic. Well 
but also yes, just to turn the same line. to be able to worship with you and be with you. If you're new and it's your first time here, you're especially welcome. And um, we'd love to get to know you and meet you at the end of the service. So if you head to our welcome area, which is just by the lobby when you came in, grab one of our purple welcome bags Ooh. and one of our lovely team will be there to answer any questions you might have. And then as many of you will have cottoned on to, Christmas is coming soon. Woo! Well done. Um, and there's lots of excitement for many reasons, but obviously one of the things we love to celebrate is Jesus at Christmas time. Woo! So we've got loads of events going on in the next few weeks. Next Sunday is the first week of Advent, and we have our Christingle All Age Service. It's just going to be a really fun, family-friendly activity where we can look at the meaning of Christmas. Yeah, definitely. And uh, on Monday the 29th, uh, we'll be starting the week of prayer. And the theme for that week will be the thrill of hope, uh, following the theme of hope for our Advent series. Um, each day, you will get um, resources straight to your inbox. Um, they'll also be on the website and social media. And each evening, um, the team will be leading a, a prayer meeting on Zoom um, throughout the week. And we just, our prayer for this time is really that each for each of us, this is a chance um, for us to encounter Jesus and also grow in our prayer journey together. Um, so do join in um, with that week of prayer and you can find all the details on the website. Yeah. Then on the 12th of December, I hope you've got your diaries, we've got our carol services, Woo! which is the highlight of my season, don't know about anyone else. Um, all of our sites will have carols um, done by our talented bands, guest musicians, there'll be festive treats, mulled wine, parties for the kids, it's just going to be a great time. So we'd love to encourage you, invite those close to you who might not know Jesus yet, they'll get a really warm welcome and just have a wonderful time. Who doesn't love singing carols? Eh? So to help you invite your friends or family, we've got some little invitations. You'll get handed one when, or a couple when you leave today. So take some, hand them out as you feel led. Yeah, definitely. Who, everyone loves Christmas. So this is a great opportunity um, to invite your friends and um, to any of the services. So all of our Advent services throughout the season will be... Um, welcoming to anyone of any spectrum of faith, whether you've been in church forever or you're just visiting for the first time. So this is a great opportunity to invite your friends. Yeah, and all the details of the Christmas services are on our website, so head there for more info. So we're going to welcome Andrew Mosey, our senior pastors, who are going to be speaking to us today. Good stuff. Good afternoon, friends. How are you doing? It's nice to see you. We're really glad to be here. It's just such fun. We've been so excited. I mean, I'm a bit emotional, all those wonderful stories that we're hearing. Isn't it wonderful? Just to how... Oh, you're, yeah, you're, def you're definitely on. <laughs> well, as we get started this afternoon, I'd like to ask you a question. You're going to see something on screen in a second, and I want you to tell me what links those images. So glance at the screen. What links those images? Come on, shout it out. Interact with me. Your families, yeah. Do you, do you know? Can you list them? Do you know? Yeah, royal family, Kardashian. We've got a few. We don't have to name them all. Don't worry if you can't. But families, we're looking at why we gather. And we gather because we're God's family. Now, our natural families can be great, good, bad, ugly. But Jesus shows us how to do life together under the care and leadership of his heavenly father. So whatever your experience of family has been, Jesus redefines family for every single one of us. Whether you're single or married or divorced, you're Asian, African, European, black or white, we now all have the same Father in heaven. And so we have all become brothers and sisters in Christ. While Jesus was talking to the crowd one day, someone told him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak with you. And he pointed to his disciples and he said, whoever does the will of my father is my brother, my mother and my sister. When Jesus was on the cross, in John's Gospel, we read this. When Jesus saw his mother there, and John, the disciple whom he loved, standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here's your son. And to John, here's your mother. And from that time on, 
that disciple John took Mary into his home. He's dying on the cross and yet the thing he's thinking about is redefining family for John and Mary. But also he's redefining family for every one of us. In the book of Revelation, we get a glimpse into the future family that God is doing, and it's a wonderful picture. It says this, After this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb of God. We are God's family. We're different, and we're equal. God's family is very different from the pictures of the families that we looked at earlier. As people, we are so different. You only have to look around the room to see that we're all so different. But what unites us is our faith in Jesus. Now this afternoon we want to help you with an illustration. Now Jesus taught in parables. You remember that when you talk about the teaching of Jesus? Images and stories that spoke about a life of faith. Well, this afternoon we're going to do that together. Something visual, something memorable, and something edible, a seasonal, a seasonal parable, if you like. That's what we're going to do this afternoon. But before we get to this seasonal parable to help us think about being a family, uh, we want to just think about the season of Advent. It's the month of expectant waiting. We think about the coming of Jesus. Three dimensions. First of all, the first coming of Christ, that wonder of the incarnation, the word becoming flesh and dwelling amongst us. And we look again to the return of Christ when God will come and make all things new. And then we think about the coming of Christ to our hearts. We learn in this life to follow Jesus and to let him be Lord of everything. So there are three Advents. And each of our Advent services is going to be really accessible to bring friends to, colleagues or neighbours. And each service will give people a simple next step in their decision to follow and explore what it is to have faith in Jesus. Now today is the last Sunday before Advent. Does anybody know what the last Sunday before Advent is traditionally called? Traditionalists in the room? Anyone shout out? Come and shout it out. Stir, Stir up, up Sunday. Sunday. Ooh, now, well, do you know why? Has, any, has anybody heard of that, by the way? Few of you? Not many. Few. Oh, look at that. Well, I'm going to give you 60 seconds of church history right now. Since 1550, Anglican parishes everywhere have used the same simple prayers and readings. Now, the opening prayer in an Anglican church service, this is part of my heritage. This and, is, and mine as well. And yours. We were brought up as Anglicans. <laughs> And we remember this vividly. The opening prayer in a church service in an Anglican church is called the Collect. And for the Sunday before Advent in late November, it reads this. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they bringing forth the fruit of good works may be richly rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to dwell in that little prayer a little bit today. So it starts off, stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people. And that's why this Sunday became known as Stir Up Sunday. So a tradition emerged that was to stir up both our wills to serve God and to stir up something to eat. How good is that? <laughs> Lord, stir up our wills even now as we think about this. So that's where the tradition of preparing a Christmas pudding together actually came from. It was meant to happen on this Sunday the last Sunday before Advent. So today, as we think about being God's family, we're going to revive a seasonal tradition, this stir up Sunday as our seasonal parable for the day. Is that okay, folks? That's our parable for the moment. Uh, there's so much symbolism in here. You're thinking, what? He's lost the plot. But no, 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 stay with me. It's a fun way to remember what it means to be God's family. And we say together, stir us up, Lord, to do your will as Birmingham Vineyard. Now, whether you love this or loathe this, this is a distinctively Christmas thing. It's that, Andrew's favourite. It is my favourite. Just maybe that has some influence in me doing yeah. this. But, but for some of you who are not from the UK or maybe your recent arrivals, this is quite delicious, just saying. <laughs> and just so you know, this is something from my cultural heritage. So please treat this very carefully. Um, With respect. In fact... If you've never had the joy of savouring a Christmas pudding, maybe you're a recent arrival or you've managed to avoid it for all these years, we've got a <laughs> gift for you and we'd like to give you one. We've got some to distribute a bit later. Maybe you haven't ha had a chance to savour this now, but we're going to think this parable through and it's got some points for us as we think about being God's family. So the tradition over hundreds of years is that people would meet up with their friends and their family to both prepare spiritually but also practically for Advent. And Stir Up Sunday was to stir up their hearts to serve God, and the visual reminder was in the stirring up of a Christmas pudding. 
So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make one. And to make this work, we're going to need lots of different ingredients. And uh, those ingredients are distributed around the room. So in a moment, this is your warning, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to bring those bags down to the front. But so just hold on to it for a moment. Now, this, the whole Christmas pudding thing is packed with symbolism. So I've got a first question for you. Do you know how many ingredients traditionally would go into a Christmas pudding? Any guesses? Shout them out. Ten. Any Not advances ten. on ten? It's like an auction, isn't it? 15. Not fifteen. Oh, Not no, twelve. You're, all, you're just randomly guessing, aren't you? It's, no, not seven. It's 13. Now, that's not unlucky if you get the Christmas pudding. <laughs> it's uh, 13 because, any guesses what that represents? Jesus and the disciples. Well done. We've got some and key ones on the front row here. That's, <laughs> do you know, it's meant to be a picture of these lives being mixed together. That's our first illustration. You couldn't have found a more unlikely combination of people than Jesus' first followers. You had freedom fighters and traitors. They were ambitious and competitive. They were manual workers, business owners. They were fishermen. And even one of the disciples linked to nobility, good old Nathaniel. Jesus brings them together and forms them, very diverse, as family, as his team. They were different, but equal. Rather like church. And it's illustrated rather wonderfully by a humble Christmas pudding. That's and not a humble Christmas pudding, that's a waitress Christmas okay, pudding. Okay, well, let's, uh, <laughs> let's get those ingredients yeah. now, Rosie. <laughs> let's, let's, let's transition. <laughs> Uh, let's have those ingredients. So Go now, on. if you have got a little baggie with something in it, would you be very gracious and bring it to the right front now. for me right now? All of the, all there, of you. there should be about 11 bags, I think. Although there are 13 ingredients, I and, promise. And I, what I would, well, I've mixed some together. What I would really love you to do, please, is empty the, your baggie into this bowl. You don't need to tell us what okay, it is. Okay, so we've got some sugar it. going in. Thank you. Um... Breadcrumbs. Amazing. That's it, all of it. Thank you very much. We can have, have two at a um, time doing we've it. We've got some dates. Yeah, we, just gather you around. Can, gather yeah, gather around. Yeah, Jackie, what have you got? Some sultanas, some flour, some chopped mixed nuts. I had great fun doing this. Absolutely super fun. This might look like grated cheese, but it is not. It's, it's grated butter. Yeah, you can do it, Sandra. Some raisins. <laughs> Well, have we you, have got some wet wipes. Have you recruited a stirrer, Rosie? That's the question. I have recruited a stirrer, actually. Uh, Rachel's got the mixed spice, and that, that's mixed spice and cinnamon. Uh, David, would you like to come and stick that milk in here? Thank you very much. Ben's got the egg. Ben, um, <laughs> you get the messy job. Can, <laughs> can you break that egg in there, not the shell? Thank you. <laughs> now, while this is all happening, we Bethany, need someone to come and stir. Who's for, stirring for, for Ben? Because he might want to wash his hand. Meg, do you want to come down here? Thank you. I need you to put on a. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Sandra's still what? struggling with the butter. Meg, you might. You might want to wear that. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Go, Meg. <laughs> Not bad. Right, Meg is very kindly going to come and stir it for me. There's a spoon. Start off, what does she want you to do? She wants me to get more batter out. Oh, it doesn't matter, Jeff. Don't worry about it. If you could stir... No, but stop. You need to stir it from east to west. Why is that, folks? Why would that be? No, no not the sunrise. Not the sunrise. <laughs> think, think Jesus yeah. of the story. We're, we're in the nativity, Jeff. <laughs> the wise no, men came... No, not the wise men came from the east... There you go. ...to the west. So, so Meg's doing a marvellous job here. If you can just... Stay here and mix it until it's completely while, mixed. While That'll that's be amazing. happening, while that's happening, thank you. you know, God is God is stirring us up as a church. <laughs> He's doing good stuff in our community. We hear that, don't we? As we gather and we hear the stories, God is stirring us to follow Him, to make a difference, and to really just see Him on the move. Do you know? We are so grateful that our church is becoming more wonderfully diverse in all its different ways. And as a team, we gather on a Monday morning to swap God's stories. We get together and celebrate what is God doing in our community. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, Joe was there and just saying, do you know, I'm so blessed by what's going on in our family. And she said, I sat on Sunday morning, and this is what she said, I sat on Sunday morning and Pastor Poy was translating uh, the service for, for those in Cantonese. And I was watching some toddlers playing, and then I went to get my coffee, and I was served by an Iranian, a South African. And then I chatted to a new British mum and had a cuddle with a baby, and then I had a long chat with an Indian student and an Indian engineer, both fairly new to the UK. And she said this, which I loved, I don't know of any other situation than at church where I would speak to such diverse people. 
from so many backgrounds and so many different countries in the space of one hour. What fun. This is God's family. We're different and we're equal and we display God's love together and God is stirring us up to do good stuff in this city. <laughs> we're different. Let's just think about this for a moment. If all the ingredients that have been put into that bowl were all the same, it would be a very bland and incredibly boring mixture. <laughs> if we're just friends with people like us, people who like the same music as us, like our tastes and our preferences, speak, speak like we do, dress like we do and think like we do, think how uninteresting that would be. God made us different and God made us one and together we all reflect his image and creativity especially when we're gathered together. Your basis for belonging in God's family is not your performance, it's not your social status, your salary or your education, it is by God's grace that you have been welcomed into God's family and we are all equally loved by God. Yeah, so in God's family we're different but we're equal. And on this, on this Stir Up Sunday we celebrate that God stirs up our hearts to love him and to serve him. But we also celebrate that God stirs up our hearts to love and serve one another. The church is meant to be this foretaste of what's to come in heaven. For people from every kind of background and nation together, worshipping Jesus, Thanks, loving Mike. God, loving each other. Great job. She's Let's done a marvellous job. Woo! Good job. Do you know, it is, it is really good, friends, to get to know people not like you. Your faith can be expanded by befriending Christians from different backgrounds. Rosie and I have spent a lot of time this last two years listening, listening well to stories. And when we listen to people's stories of sacrifice and loss, of racism and injustice, of answered prayers and breakthrough, of trust and hope, I'm changed by that. My respect deepens, my love grows, my image of God is more vivid and my view of his church expands. We simply cannot claim to love God and not love his family. We learn how to love by being with people different to us week in, week out. Different, older, younger. That's one reason why we gather. We gather on Sundays, we gather in small groups. We do it in person, we do it online. Because we're God's diverse family. So we're God's family. We're different and, we, and we're equal. And together... We display God's love. Church at its best is a taste of the kingdom of heaven and the world is meant to get to taste God's new family. It says in John, uh, 1 John, for whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they've not seen. So let's go back to that really simple collect prayer at the beginning. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people that they, bringing forth the fruit of of good works may be richly rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now Christmas pudding is a fruit pudding. Anybody notice that? <laughs> and that's symbolic of that prayer. God stirs us up to bring forth the fruit of good works. In the Bible we're told that God's prepared good works for each of us to do. Good works are like the good fruit in our lives as Christ's followers. And we know that love is the first fruit of the Spirit. So as God's family we learn Day by day, week by week, to love one another. Jesus actually said this. Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And as we look around church, we see so many examples of love in action. We see WhatsApp groups among small groups who pray for each other. They pray for family concerns or jobs or pressures. We see people sharing honestly and vulnerably about their lives, about their fears and their struggles, with no fear and no shame. Small groups cooking meals after surgery or a bout of illness. Genuine friendships forming across different cultural groups, ages, stages and backgrounds. We see people buying shopping and school uniforms and even in this week, people buying bunk beds for other families who need them. We've heard of people moving into people's homes in the church when accommodation's been needed. We've heard of small groups you know, whipping together to help someone go on a honeymoon when they haven't got the resources, being insured on each other's cars for holidays. There have been uh, deposits for house purchases loaned. There have been people giving their precious time to give interview practice and career advice. Yeah, low interest loans to help start businesses and seed funding. The list goes on. Mm. And we're thankful for such a generous church. And we're learning to love each other well. Yeah. And Sundays and small groups are such a, see, a key part in that becoming a reality. We need to be consistently with each other for this to be lived out. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, if anybody's watching online, because we're not live right now, but this is going to be watched in the week, we know that between one and 200 people every week watch us online after the service and can't be in the room for different reasons. We want you to be part of family. And we just say a couple of things. Come and join us if you're able. Some of you can't for medical reasons, and we get that. But that's where we can do online Zoom groups. We can do small groups. Mm -hmm. Whatever we can do to help you connect and feel part of family, that's what we're here for. Jesus said this, 
Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, a lot of baking... I've been teaching Andrew this. <laughs> a lot of baking is about getting the measurements right. Can you hold that? It's not your forte, is it, honey? Not my forte, but just not keep moving forte. on. If we measured things out in tiny measures... If we'd measured the things for this Christmas pudding in tiny measures, we would have a rather pathetic pudding, wouldn't we, if we'd done it with this? I much prefer to measure things out in jugs or even bigger, like buckets. We couldn't really bring a bucket. <laughs> with the measure we use, it will be used to you. Let's grow in generosity. Let's ask, what can I do for other people rather than what can other people do for me? Hmm. Another bit of symbolism as we wrap this up. What normally goes on top of a pudding? Anybody know? Interact with me. A what Christmas go- pudding, that is. A Christmas pudding. What goes on top? Brandy. Brandy, that's, Brandy does. That's the baptism wasn't... of the Holy Spirit, but we're not coming to... <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> but what else goes on top of there? The holly. There you go. Holly. holly. We've got holly. Now, again, all of no these things represent... No expense spared. Picked these... out of the park this morning. Indeed. Do you know what the holly represents, folks? Oh. Crown of thorns. Well done. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We're just there. Props ready. We've even got one of these. Do you know, the whole idea of this symbolism is to remember the way of Jesus, the servant king. He came not to serve, but to, sorry, not to be served, but to serve others. And he set us an example to follow. Yeah. Can I just kind of encourage us? That's the way of Jesus, and it's the way of us as a, as a group of friends of Jesus. Just one thing I want to do is that we've talked about Christmas puddings for a little so, while. Some yeah. of you in the room, you've not had the joy of savouring a Christmas pudding. I mean, you're not going to eat it now. You're going to save it for the right moment. But just pop your hand up. Own the moment. If you've never had the joy of having a Christmas pudding, you're from a different. Maybe you've recently arrived here. Uh, we've got lots of them, so please help me out here. Jeff, pop your hands up in the air if you've not had a Christmas pudding. Um, just and you want one because <laughs> we'd like to bless you. We've got plenty here, and then the idea is that you can enjoy them sometime over the festive period. Or maybe you've had one and you just you know want to pass yeah, them on to a neighbour. Stick your hand up high. There we go. There's Good. some we in the middle up there. <laughs> <laughs> Medi and Nassim. Medi and Nassim. You, we want you to give them two. They need give a couple. Give them two, Jeff. They need a couple. Pop those hands There's up. There's one each. We don't want no, you to miss we, that. No, please, I don't want to take 40 Christmas puddings home. One in the middle. The, you might crave it. It's, all the details are on there. Just, uh, it's, it's going to be safe. Hey, listen. There must be some more people that need a please. They need a Christmas pudding. Have you got... Th- have you got... You need four. There's yeah, four of you. Come on, four over there. We don't want you to miss that. Listen, just as we, just as we think this thing through, friends, I was, weren't you struck by when, when Poi, Pastor Poi said, we had lots of farewell meals? Yeah. That's pretty brutal, isn't it? How about we just help that with plenty of welcome meals? Hmm. Hey, I want to just put a really practical, direct challenge. If you consider this your church, do something this Advent. Open up home. Just make some space in your time and life just for other people not like you. Just hanging out with people like you all the time is boring. Just don't do that. Just expand your horizons. Now you might think, my house isn't the kind of house I can host people in. Just go out for coffee. Hear people's story. Chat. Just respect someone enough to give them your time and just show a bit of a welcome. Let's be that kind of church and let's do that kind of stuff together. You know, consistent interest in the lives of others forms little connections and that's how God's family grows. And as we learn to live those generous lives, God gives back to us. He does it abundantly again and again. Remember those words, star up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they bringing forth the fruit of good works may be richly rewarded. So one last piece of symbolism about the Christmas pudding. What do you get inside a Christmas pudding sometimes? What gets put in there? Yeah, a pound. A That's pound? Quite, not in our family, you don't. <laughs> you don't get a pound in our house. You get five pence pieces if you're lucky, but you get money. <laughs> you, you get Sell money. The coins. There we go. Coins. These remind us that we are richly rewarded by God. That's what they represent. And as we learn to live generous lives, God gives back to us. Yeah, wrapping it up, friends. You know, the Lord, on this Stir Up Sunday, the Lord is stirring us by his spirit. He's doing good stuff in our family. And we're so grateful. We're God's family. We're different and we're equal. Together, 
we get to display God's love. And as a church, we're meant to be this full taste of God's future. We display on earth what it is to be loved by Father God and to live as his diverse family as we learn to love each other. Mm-hmm. Final question, how is God stirring you today? Is it a bit like Charles Nemo to lead a group? Is it like Simon and Juliet to serve and show God's love in compassionate ways? Is it to practice hospitality? I want every one of you to be stirred up to do that. Mm-hmm. Is it maybe to be part of a team to be involved in planting a new site in our city? Is it to reach out to others to invite a friend this Christmas? Just as we come and finish, I want to read one verse that pulls these different themes together. It's Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting meeting together, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Why don't we stand together? I'm going to pray and going to give some people in the room the chance for a first step because God is stirring you to follow him today. And just before we pray, we will show you what's going to happen to this delicious thing that Meg has so beautifully mixed for us. We'll, I'm going to bake it, steam it, and then we'll put some pictures on social media to show you what we do with it. Good stuff. Just recognise that we're going to have a chance to respond right now in a time of worship, and that gives us the chance to say, God, how are you stirring me today? Maybe you feel pretty switched off, and you say, God, my, my, my faith is a little bit stuck at the moment. I need you to work in my heart. Stir me up in my spirit. Maybe you feel God is speaking to you. We're going to have space and time to respond, but for those in the room and you're not yet convinced of uh, your place in God's family, you've never said yes to following Jesus, we want to give you space to be part of God's family. This diverse, generous family where we learn to love one another, not based on status or approval or performance, but just based on the love of God for us, that's a great family to be part of. It's an upgrade for whatever you ha- whatever how functional or dysfunctional your family is, it's an upgrade, I can tell you that. And, and we want to extend an invitation that you can take in this moment of first step to following Jesus, to saying yes to him, to welcoming Jesus into your life and to being part of God's diverse family. You will add to it by being part of it and you'll be added to by being part of it as well. Father, thank you that you're here by your spirit. We just thank you for everybody who's both in the room now and catching up, the couple of hundred people that we'll be catching up in the next few days. We pray, Jesus, that for any who are unconvinced and not yet committed to you, let this be a moment where we respond to your invitation to be part of your family with you as our Father in heaven and a place to belong and a place to grow. Hey, if you're in that place where you want to take a first step to becoming a friend of Jesus, to being in God's family, then just in your heart, say this simple prayer, Jesus, thank you that you died for me. You see everything about my life and you've made a way for me to be a friend of God. I receive the gift of new life. I choose to trust you and follow you. Come and live in my heart. Be my Lord and be my Saviour. Jesus, I choose life with you. And I choose life to the full. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'll pray with you a bit later. But if that's you, we just want to stand with you and celebrate. Let's worship and ask the Lord, Lord, how are you stirring us today? Under the dirt, I break of dust. 
blazing sun Should be the night And I will rise Among the saints My gaze transfixed On Jesus' face
let's just stay in this place of dwelling in the presence of God
Spirit, lead us where our trust is without borders. What is the next step of trust that God is inviting you into? Thank you, Spirit, that you lead us. We just love to take some time uh, now to be able to bless one another, bless what God is doing. And for some of us, we have a really clear sense of what God is stirring up in us and what God is calling us to. And we would really appreciate some prayer. And if that's you, you can um, come on down to my right and so we would love to pray with you or maybe you just want to tap someone um, close to you on the shoulder and ask them to pray um, at their best blessing for you we've also got some team over here on the left we've got some space on the left who um, are our prophetic team who really feel they want to um, speak into people's lives um, prophetically at this time and so if you maybe you're here and you feel a general stirring that God wants to challenge you but or in, invite you into something, but you're not quite sure what it is. Well, they would love um, to pray for you. And often in those moments of the prophetic, God can really lead. So if that is you, then you can come down onto my left. Um, so there are some spaces. This is a time now where you can sit, you can listen, you can ask God, what is it you're asking of me? Or if you're really sure, then you can come down here on the right, get some prayer and blessing. Um, as you step out into what God's calling to you. Or maybe you're just aware that you really need to hear God's voice. So why don't you come down here um, and get some prayer for those guys. This is a moment for all of us to take part. All of us to either be getting prayer, giving prayer, or receiving from God in this moment. So let's be family to one another.